Okay, so 12, 113. Potassium ions have a radius of 133 picometers, and bromines have a radius of 195 picometers. Um, the crystal structure of potassium bromide is the same for sodium chloride. So we have to look at the crystal structure for sodium chloride here, which is where? Here's the salts, or the metals. Cesium chloride, and there's sodium chloride. So on page 566, we have sodium chloride. And we can see that the, uh, let's see, the question is, the crystal structure of potassium bromide is the same for sodium chloride. Estimate the length of the edge of the cell of potassium bromide. Well, we can see in a cell of sodium chloride, let's see, is there anywhere else? Oh, also on page 564 at the bottom. You can see this cell has the, the edge has the length, edge has the length of one sodium atom and one, one chloride atom. So there's one anion and one cation's length worth. So if I have 133 and 195, 133 times 2, because that's the radius, I mean, the diameter, that's the distance of, so the edge looks like this with, one radius of our chloride ion here, one over the potassium bromide, is that what we're talking about? So this is the radius of the bromide ion, and then here is the diameter 2R of the potassium ion, and then the rest down here is going to look something like this, right? Let's try that again. All right, and this is R of the bromide ion as well. So we have 2R of the bromide and 2R of the potassium, which is just the, the diameter of the two of them. So 266 plus 195 plus 195, and we're getting 656. So for 12, 113, 656. Is that right? Yeah, 656. Okay? 12, 150. Calculate the angles at which X-ray wavelengths, 229 picometers, that's the wavelengths of the X-ray, will be observed to be diffracted from a crystal plane spacing of 1.0 times 10 to the third picometers apart. So 1,000, 1, 2, 3, picometers spacing. All right, and what else? or 2.5 times 10 to the 2 is 250 picometers apart. So 250 picometer spacing. All right, so that's the wavelength. We can look for that equation on page 577. N times the wavelength equals 2D is the distance sine uh, theta, which is the angle. Okay, and the Bragg equation, page 569, <coughs> we're reminded n is a whole number. And they told us that, that in this case n is going to be equal to 1. This is our wavelength, and our wavelength we're going to want to have in um, the same units as this spacing, and d is the spacing, right? Ooh. Yeah, D is the spacing between the planes. So if we use 229 here, 229 picometers, N equals 1, equals 2. Oh, the spacing here is also in picometers, so this is 1,000 sine theta. So 229 divided by 2,000, right? 
divide both sides by 2,000. So we're going to get 229 divided by 2,000, and we get 0.1145 equals sine theta. All right, inverse sine. Point one one four five. So let's see, how do I point one one four five? So I need to go into my mode, I guess. Click the mode button and go from radian to degree. There we go. And then I can quit there. And now I do inverse sine of point 0.1145. Whoops. All right, 6.57. Is that the question is, um, let's see, they're asking, let's see, where is the question? They're asking what the angle is, right? What the angle of diffraction is? Calculate the angles at which the X-ray wavelengths will diffract from the crystal. So 6.57 degrees. And again, we have to go into this calculator here. And if you want to use this calculator here, you have to go into your uh, mode. So you click mode there, and you have to go down twice and on radians. And you have to move that radians over to degrees. All right, and then you go like that and quit. So that when you take the inverse sine of something, it'll give it to you in degrees and not in radians. All right, so, oh, and then we can solve it for this other one, which would be two times. So we can also set up this Bragg equation one more time with the 250 picometer spacing. 229 equals 2 times 250 sine theta. So we have 229 divided by 500. All right, and then um, inverse sine of 0.458 which is 229 over 500, so we're looking at 27.3 uh, degrees. So that's right, 27.3 degrees. Okay, 12, 1, 17. Cesium chloride forms a simple cubic lattice in which cesium ions are in the center are at the corners, and chloride ion is in the center. The cation contacts, cation anion contact occurs along the body diagonal. So, it, cesium chloride ion forms a simple cubic lattice in which the cesium ions are at the corners, and chloride ion is in the center. Okay, so here's the chloride ion in the center, and the cesium atoms are at the corners. Okay, and the contact between the anion and the cation occurs along the body diagonal. So this is the di face diagonal, so the body diagonal means from here down to, so if I draw this, Okay, so here we have our back left bottom corner and our top right front corner. And that's the body diagonal from going right through the middle. And so this anion, or this cation here connects this anion and then it goes back into the back and on the back there there's another cation that's contacted. All right, so it's kind of hard to imagine. My drawing, not very good there. But if we turn to page, body centered cell unit. Let's see, we're looking at what they call it. They call it simple cubic lattice. 
cesium chloride. So we see it um, on page 565. And they say that there's a contact between, on 565, again, the top front right and the bottom left back and the chloride ion in between. So that is the connection there. So the body angle starts at one corner and runs through the center in the opposite corner. That's what we have just explained. The length of the edge of the unit cell is 412.3 picometers. So this length here, 412.3 picometers, right here, right? And the length of the edge of the unit cell is 412.3. The chloride ion has a radius of 181. Calculate the radius of the cesium ion. Okay. So, 412.3 here. Um, this, ang this length back here is also 412.3, this length, the bottom length there. And we would like to know that because then we can identify the bottom diagonal, where we're going from bottom right to bottom left. Because what we're trying to draw is this triangle here, where we have this edge, the bottom diagonal, and then the, um, what they call the body diagonal, right? So the face diagonal, the body diagonal, and the bottom edge. So here's the top right, here's the bottom right front, right? top right front, bottom right front. This is going to the bottom back left, and this top right front goes to the bottom back left as well. So here I'll draw. Try that one more time. This needs to go. Okay. So this is the triangle we're trying to get, right? Hopefully you can kind of visualize what, what we're looking at. Because what it tells us we can do is we can take this length, which we are told is 412.3, and then we'll be able to identify that length right there, right? Because it is. If I take um, this length and maybe, let's see, this is the bottom. So if I take this length and this length, it's diagonal. This is going to be a, a 1, 1, root 2 relationship. So if I just take 412.3 and multiply it by the square root of 2, 412.3 times the square root of 2, and that's going to be 583. So it looks like this distance right here is going to be 583. So 583 is the bottom, 412.3 is this side here, and there's a, this is a 412.3, there's a 90 degree angle here, 583, and then we have to determine what the angle there is. And for a 90 degree angle, right, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So uh, I can determine the length of this whole body centered or uh, body diagonal and I know that that body diagonal it has the length of the cesium one cesium atom and one um, chloride atom right so 583 squared plus 412.3 squared and then I take the square root of that value. So I'm looking at a length of 714.12. That's this length right here, the whole thing, right? And then I see that the, the radius of the chloride ion is 181. So I subtract 181 twice because I want the whole diameter of the chloride ion. And that's going to leave me with the diameter of the uh, cesium ion. So I divide that by 2, whatever value I have there. So I'm getting a value of 176 picometers, 176. All right, so again, we were able to identify the length of this bottom portion using 1, 1, root 2, because this is an equilateral triangle, right? 90 degree angles, and two sides are exactly the same. Let's see, is that an equilateral triangle? Is that what they call that? 
or two sides of the same, I can't remember. But uh, again, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared there. So, Uh, then we could identify, we could identify this arm, we could identify that leg there, and we could identify the third one and subtract the chloride ion. All right, 117 is done. One nineteen. Tin chloride has soft crystals with a melting point of minus three three point two. The liquid is non conducting. What type of crystal is formed? Well, tin chloride, we can look at our, well, we, so it's an ionic crystal, right? But it's not conducting. What type of crystal is formed? Soft crystal has a melting point of minus 30.2. So, melting point of minus 30.2. So, we would say that it's, um, it's not going to be. A, an ionic solid, really, right? Because it has a melting point of minus 30.2. So we're going to have to call that a molecular solid. So even though it looks like it would be an ionic compound, because tin we think of as a metal, we'd have to call it a molecular solid. 11121, Colombian is neither the name for, is the name for one of the elements. It's shiny, soft, ductile, it sounds like a metal, melts at a high temperature, conducts electricity, yeah, it's a metal. So 121, 12121, that's going to be uh, metal. Um, 12123, indicate what type of crystal, ionic, molecular, covalent, or metallic, for each of the following forms would form when it solidifies. So bromine 2, that would be a molecular solid. 12, 12123, that would be a molecular solid. T lithium fluoride, that would be an ionic solid. When it Crystal, which is the following forms, it solidifies. Magnesium oxidized, that's an ionic solid. Molybdenum would be a uh, metallic solid. Silicon would be a covalent solid. Uh, pH 3, a molecular solid. Sodium hydroxide, ionic solid. Okay, I think we've got them all right there. Oh, instead of molecular, they use the word covalent, but kind of the same idea. Okay, good.